let's start our official final exam review for the Software Engineering 1 course. And uh, if you go into the Software Engineering 1 link, don't be confused, you are the weekday section. If you click on the weekday section, final exam review, it'll take you to this document here. I'll just open up this document and we'll just save it. We'll save it on the desktop. I think I might actually even have it open already. And, uh, yep, here it is. It's all opened up. Let me just make sure this is, the, this is a test of my document, make sure it's the right document. Yep, it's the right document. So let me uh, make this a little bigger so you can see it. And, uh, let's see. A little bigger. You can always download it on your local computer as well. So the exam is only worth, and this will be kind of a short review, short class, and this is the last class, because uh, there's not really much to talk about for this particular class in terms of the final exam, because it's only uh, 10 questions long. It's only worth 10 points. It, no, I'm sorry, it's 12 questions long, but it's only worth 10 points, uh, which is a very low percentage of your grade. Your project work is worth a lot more, and your midterm is worth about the same as the final. So what you really want to do is focus on getting that project done by the 16th of August and then come in, you know, Monday or Wednesday of next week or the following week and take this 10 point. It'll probably take you less than an hour, I think, to take to, to fill it out. Um, unlike the weekend course, this one is closed book, closed note, closed neighbor, closed everything. It's multiple choice questions, however, not short answer. So the format is 12 multiple choice questions. They're not hard multiple choices. They're actually kind of straightforward. Um, and I, I did something kind of interesting with this because I write a new exam every time. This one uh, is focused on the second half of the course. Because, <laughs> you know, I got you know, I'm really tired of asking basic software engineering questions. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided to pull out some brand new questions I've never done before. So it's kind of a, an experiment. So I'm going to go through it subject by subject, let you know what to, uh, what to expect. Um, it's only worth 10 points, uh, closed book, closed notes, 12 questions, multiple choice variety. There aren't any uh, all of the above, none of the above, A and B, B and C, D and E, select all that apply. It's just only one correct answer uh, per question. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's sort of on the, uh, focuses on the back end of the course, past the midterm. So you still want to know what software engineering is as a discipline. I, I do have one or two questions they get in the concept of what software engineering is. Also, um, you know, just so I don't forget it, also, um, you don't necessarily have to answer these types of questions here. Like, do you think that, these, these are not sample questions. These are, in fact, I used the sample final exam review, I modified it, but um, used some of the same wording in the weekend versus the weekday. These are some of the, like, question types that they were getting. You're not getting these types of questions. You're getting more specific questions. And I'll give you some examples in a few minutes. Uh, but what uh, software engineering is, is, you know, why is it a discipline, stuff like that. That's basic, you know, software engineering one kind of thing. Some common risk factors. I'll tell you a majority of the questions are on product quality, quality assurance, risk factors. <laughs> Goals of quality, software metrics, version control, and everything past the midterm, essentially, or right up to the midterm, right past the midterm, but not the first part of the course. Um, so what's meant by interoperability, and I actually put a little definition here, the, the ability of two or more software systems or systems themselves or components to exchange information, use the information that has been exchanged, which is kind of... You talked a little bit about it. I haven't used the word. The word is used on the exam, however. Uh, so know what a interoperability is. You know, systems working together, exchanging information, using the information, uh, which is leads to uh, you know design philosophies of systems. Also, concepts not on here, but uh, related to it would be uh, portability. You know, software qualities, efficiency, um, modular design. You know, so you can swap out components and stuff like that in terms of the concept. Um, obviously, it would not be a software engineering final exam if I didn't ask you one question at least about software development lifecycle models. <laughs> so, uh, there's actually two questions on the subject. Um, and in fact, I'll read you the A, B, C, D option. Uh, 
here's a, here's here's part of the question, and you can kind of get a feel for how these two questions work. So, the form of software development model, blah 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 blah. Your options are a waterfall, b incremental, c evolutionary, d spiral. <laughs> So know the differences between those three. In fact, I think I put them in here. Waterfall, incremental, evolutionary spiral. <laughs> uh, know the differences in waterfall uh, between the different life cycle models. You know, the pros and cons of each one. There's two questions that are going to, you know, have you pick a model for a particular um, description. No concepts of good design. Uh, let's see. Uh, the following statements about requirements is not true. A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> uh, that's one of the questions. Uh, the following statements about design document is not true. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so some questions, some basic questions about requirements, some basic questions about the design. Nothing about the analysis document. Hopefully you guys will never repeat that elsewhere because it doesn't exist. It's just the design documents and the requirements document. Um, how software metrics are used as well. Uh, let's see what we got going on here with that question. Uh, I see one on version control. Let's see. Da -da -da. The goal of software metrics. Blah, 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 blah. A, B, C, D, or E. <laughs> now what the software metrics is meaning to accomplish. It's actually kind of a fairly easy exam in my opinion. I mean... I've had easier ones. This one's not as easy as maybe the one I gave last year because it covers mostly the second part of the course instead of the first part, but it'll definitely be interesting for you. I did throw in um, uh, several questions on quality control and quality assurance. Um, so, you know, as an example, the goal of quality assurance is dot, 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 <laughs> A, B, C, D, or F, or whatever. And then the questions are. Uh, Full sentences so that you have to actually know what the goal is in order to answer the question. Um, drilling going on, okay. Uh, risk factors, uh, quality assurance activities, quality product. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anything actually. Concept of formal reviews. Oh, right here. What a formal review is, if you look at the quality assurance lecture, you'll get some information about... Is this from the development perspective or from the plan perspective? And it's from a quality assurance perspective. If you look at the, um, the review, the, the review, if you review the quality assurance uh, lecture, I can't remember which one that was, it was towards the end of the course. It talks about the review concept, but it's the reviewing of of everything. It's formal reviews of the software, the documentation, um, everything that is associated with it to come out with um, some factors that might need improvement, some suggestions. Um, so in some of the organizations, the, the formal review is done by the developers also? Yeah, yeah, it could be. You think of it from the developer's perspective, not really from the customer's. Um, it's not like an acceptance review or something like that. Um, here, here the question actually goes, and uh, formal review reviews seek to dot 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 a b c d or e f. So you know, look, look up or be familiar with the concept of the formal reviews, what they're looking for, you know, what what are some of the things that you're checking, how are they usually done, stuff like that. Who does them? It's, it, the question actually doesn't relate to who does them though, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see, you have one on configuration. You're actually showing a configuration diagram and you're asked some questions about it. Um, so that would be version control. Uh, if you remember, towards the end we had a version control, software control, versioning lecture that had a version tree with one, two, and one dot one. You're given a little tree, actually, and then you're asked some questions, one question about it. Uh, multiple choice, obviously. Uh, so. A quality assurance plan is also, the concept of the quality assurance plan is also on the exam. Oh, here it is here, quality assurance plan. <laughs> I've run out of questions, I've given you all of them. <laughs> so, uh, what are some of the items uh, that go into the plan? What is the plan trying to control? 
And uh, unlike an essay, you can't say, oh, it's trying to control the quality of the, pro of the product. <laughs> no, instead, it'll be a question regarding some of the uh, details of the plan itself. So. Concept of versioning, code revision schemes that occur in uh, one question, actually. One, only one question is on that. So. As you can see, hopefully you're getting the impression it's a pretty easy exam. Nothing to be stressed about. It'd probably take you a half hour at most if you're a slow reader. I don't know. I shouldn't say that because some people will take two hours to take this thing. You have as long as you want. You can show up at 9 o'clock in the morning, stay up till 5 o'clock at night, and take the exam for eight hours if you want. <laughs> I don't think you're going to do that. <laughs> I think you'd be bored of it by then. Um, but you may take as long as you want. There's only 12 questions, though. So, you know, bring lunch or a movie or something if you're, you're going to spend all day. <laughs> so. Questions on the questions. Questions on the exam. Mm -hmm. I was going to. Uh, I mean, did not cover the Scrum model or the Agile model. The what? The lecture notes? Yes. It's not covering the Agile model, which was the. Agile? agile? No, nope, nothing on Agile. And the Scrum no, nothing on that either. I I uh, didn't actually cover that, so that's not going to so be. Those are the models which are which have been used for most of the companies. Um, modern day software development lifecycle models, agile, yeah, yeah, but really there are combinations of existing traditional models, and the models themselves have been changing, and everyone's interpretation of the model isn't really consistent. So, but you're right, though. They're the, probably the more popular ones that are being used. So. I covered a little bit of it in the Software Engineering 2 course and towards the end of the course. But uh, it doesn't make very much... The concept of the model and the methodology used to develop the software makes sense to focus on, in my, in my opinion, um, versus, you know, all of the brand new models that are out. Because some of them come and go. Some of them, you know... I mean, if I, if I were to do anything, if I were to... You know, if I was going to pick a model to focus on, I'd probably look at rapid application development <laughs> or Agile. Agile's got some promising, um, some promising characteristics to it. But no, no, you're not going to have to know anything about either one of those two models for the exam. Questions, comments, concerns? I know it was too easy. Well, it's only ten points. This course is all about the project. I've had a lot of people emailing me lately asking about, can we have five people in a project? It's like they're just now forming their teams, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right. My advice to everybody is make sure you turn something in under your name. With So if you're working in a team of three, a team of five, make sure every three or five people, everybody on the team has something to upload. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to find who a team you're on. And I personally wouldn't just have people join a team just, you know, because I think some of the existing teams are going to get pressured by stray people coming in. Hey, I need a project. Hey, can I be on your team? You know, and they haven't done anything all term. I wouldn't let them on your team, personally. Let them, let them sweat it out, do their own work. So, um, Any other questions? I don't have very much for you today, then. So on the project. Yeah, uh, on the project. Okay. Uh-huh. Suppose if the team, if they want to join my team, so <laughs> I have complete, mostly have completed my project. Yeah. Because uh, if they are giving the name, let them email me because I have to add those names in the board for a certificate. So the yeah. project should have a certificate. Well, when I look at your projects, I'll see what names you've put on there. And if you didn't put their name on there and you turned it in, you didn't put their name on there, they're not on your team. If they're turning in somebody else's project with your name on it, that's the key. Put all your names on the projects who are actually on the projects. If your name's not listed, you're not going to get any credit for it. And if I see the same project, I actually had this happen a couple of terms ago. Same project submitted by hundreds of students, same exact project, and they just added different names to it. <laughs> I actually have a list of those projects already <laughs> I can compare them with. And after I look at them all in one sitting, after about four or five hours of this, I get pretty right, you know, downright, you know, delete, F, F, you know. <laughs> I don't even bother looking at it. <laughs> so, yeah, don't do that. All people in the project as individuals should upload it in a document should hopefully have everybody's name on it. 
who they worked with, and at least your name on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I know that you guys are working, to, I mean, you know, when groups work together, it's like, who uploads it? But do you really want to take responsibility for one person uploading it and me finding it under that one person? I would all upload it. So, and th that way you all have a record of it. And if you're all working together, you should all have access to it, which is another thing. So people who don't upload projects, oh yeah, I was on so-and-so's team. Well, don't you have access to it? Haven't you seen the project? Didn't they give it to you? Why didn't you upload it? <laughs> Which kind of catches the, oh yeah, I was on that other team. Well, what's the name of that team? I don't know. I was on that team, though. You know, it, you got to upload something. So, and you can actually, there are supposed to be a link at the bottom. I don't know if it's there or not. Uh, to put one file, the zip file of the everything together, you can do it that way if you want. Or you can upload them individually. I don't know if that link was actually made. It was supposed to have been made a while back, but I don't think it exists. Don't quote me on that, it might exist. So. Other questions? Can you use pen, paper, pencil? I mean, excuse me, pen, pencil, crayon, magic marker, highlighter. No, don't use a highlighter pen. <laughs> All right, we're done then. You can enjoy the rest of uh, this beautiful Monday, mo uh, Wednesday morning. <laughs> no more for you. We actually, because you know the Wednesday classes, we actually had all of, our, all of our class meetings. So I probably could have done this last week, but what would we would have? What would we have done this week? <laughs> it's the Mondays. It's the Monday classes that ended up being short, because so. we had like too many Monday vacations.